Now for a review on cells. All living things on Earth are made of cells, as you can see right here. So anything that's alive, whether it's a plant, an animal, a fungus, a bacterium, it's made of cells. And cells can't uh, survive unless they have these things called organelles. Organelles are kind of like the organs in your body. They carry out different functions. So just like you have a stomach that digests food in your body, you have an organelle that helps to break down food in your cells. There are several different types of cells. The major two types are prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are very simple cells. Okay? Uh, they have no nucleus or other membrane-bound organelles. One way you can remember that prokaryotes do not have a nucleus or membrane-bound organelles is that pro rhymes with no. Also, prokaryotic cells are bacteria. So the only living things on Earth that don't have a nucleus and so are prokaryotic cells are bacteria. The other type of cells are eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are more complex cells, so they're much more complex than prokaryotic cells because of what they have inside of them. So eukaryotic cells do have a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. As you can see, do rhymes with you. So that's a neat way to remember that eukaryotic cells do have a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. Also, eukaryotic cells include anything on Earth but bacteria. So anything that's alive other than bacteria will be a eukaryotic cell. All right, so now we're going to discuss the different organelles inside of cells. The first one is the nucleus. The function of a nucleus is that it controls everything a cell does and holds the DNA. So if you were to say a cell is like a school, the nucleus would be like the principal of the school because a principal controls what, a school, what happens inside of a school and the nucleus controls what happens inside of a cell. So this is a rough sketch of a cell right here and in purple you see the region that's the nucleus. So this entire circle is a nucleus. Inside the nucleus you might see several different structures. There's a nucleolus and there's also DNA. Um, as you can see, the nucleus holds DNA, and these are four chromosomes of DNA right here. Um, as you can see, prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, and eukaryotes do have a nucleus. The next organelle we're going to discuss is the cell membrane. It's also known as the plasma membrane. You can use those two terms interchangeably. The function of the cell membrane is that it controls what goes in and out of a cell. This is very important for maintaining a stable balance inside cells. Um, if, this is our rough sketch of a cell right here. You can see our nucleus in purple, and the green region is the cell membrane. Uh, and it's important to note that all cells have a cell membrane. The next organelle we're going to discuss is the cell wall. Um, not all cells have a cell wall, but its function is to provide extra structure and support. You can kind of think of it like the brick wall of a school. The brick wall helps to provide extra structure and support for a school so that it doesn't fall down. Um, as you can see in our rough sketch right here, the green region is our cell membrane, and outside of the cell membrane is the cell wall. Animal cells do not have a cell wall. Plant cells do have a cell wall. So in an animal cell, it would have the green cell, cell membrane or plasma membrane, but it would not have a cell wall. Whereas a plant cell would have this extra layer on the outside, the cell wall. Uh, it's important to note also that cell walls in plants are made of the sugar cellulose. And the cell walls in fungi are made of chitin. The next organelle we're going to discuss is a very simple organelle. It's not bound by a membrane, and all cells have this organelle. It's called a ribosome. The function of ribosomes are to make proteins. Now, since all cells need proteins, all cells have ribosomes to make those proteins. Um, and a special way or a fancy way of saying to make proteins is protein synthesis. Uh, the word synthesis literally means to make. So if um, you were to say Santa Claus's elves make toys, you could say um, Santa Claus's elves synthesize toys. So a fancy way of saying to make proteins is protein synthesis. Now here's another rough sketch of a cell. We have our nucleus in purple and our cell membrane in green, and the little orange dots are ribosomes. 
As you can see, ribosomes can be free, meaning they float freely around the cell, or they can be attached to various membranes, like you see right here. This is called the endoplasmic reticulum, um, and the orange dots are ribosomes. So whether or not the ribosomes are free or attached to a membrane, as long as you see little dots, those are ribosomes. Now it's very important to note that all cells have ribosomes. So both prokaryotic cells, meaning bacteria, and all eukaryotic cells, plants, animals, fungi, and protists, all have ribosomes. The next organelle we're going to discuss is a vacuole. And the function of a vacuole is to store things. Now, it's important to note that a vacuole looks different in plant cells and animal cells. So on the left we have a plant cell, and on the right we have an animal cell. As you can see, a plant cell has a very large vacuole, and that's represented by this blue structure here. Animal cells tend to have several smaller vacuoles. The next organelle we're going to discuss is called the mitochondrion. Now, you might have heard it as mitochondria, but they're the same thing. Mitochondrion is just singular, mitochondria is plural. Kind of like you'd say wolf and wolves. It's a different form for the plural form. And the function of a mitochondrion is to break down food to release energy. And if you remember, ATP is a cell's energy. So we use the terms energy and ATP interchangeably in biology. Now, a fancy way of saying breaks down food to release energy is cell respiration. So, when I say cell respiration, that literally means breaking down food to release energy. So, we can say that mitochondria perform cell respiration, since they break down our food to release energy. Now, here's another rough sketch of a cell. Um, again, in purple we have our nucleus, and in green we have our cell membrane. And if you look at the orange structures here, these are our mitochondria. Now, a neat way to remember what a mitochondria looks like, um, if you look at the structure here, you almost see a squiggly M-shaped structure. And since mitochondria starts with an M, you can remember that is a mitochondrion. Um, and also something important to note is that since our mitochondria help provide cells with energy, if a cell has a lot of mitochondria, it is going to produce lots of ATP. So you can think of lots of different cells in your body that would have a lot of mitochondria. For example, your muscle cells, they have to do a lot of work, so they need a lot of energy. Therefore, they will have a lot of these mitochondria. So if you're looking at a muscle cell, you would expect to have a lot of these different structures like this. Um, an important thing to note is that both plants and animals have mitochondria. However, since mitochondria are complex membrane-bound organelles, prokaryotes do not have mitochondria. The next organelle is a chloroplast. Now the function of a chloroplast is to perform photosynthesis by capturing sunlight to make sugar. So photosynthesis is the process of using sunlight, carbon dioxide, to make sugars in plant cells. Now if we look at this right here, this is a sketch of a plant cell. We can see our nucleus with the DNA inside. The green structure is our cell membrane. The red structure is the cell wall. We have our mitochondria and ribosomes. Now, look at this green structure right here that looks like you have stacks of coins or stacks of pancakes inside. Those are called chloroplasts. Now, it's important to note that plants have chloroplasts, however, animal cells and bacteria do not. So if you see a cell that has chloroplasts inside of it and you are asked, is this a plant cell, a bacterial cell, or an animal cell, you would know that this is a plant cell because plants do photosynthesis while animals do not. The next cell structure we're going to discuss is not actually an organelle, rather it's the thing that organelles float around in inside of a cell. That's called cytoplasm. Now cyto literally means cell, so cytoplasm is literally like the cell goo that the organelles float around in. It's a liquidy material that all the organelles, the ribosomes, uh, the mitochondria, the chloroplasts, and other organelles float around in inside of the cell. So if this is a cell right here, you can see different structures inside of the cell. The white space would all be the cytoplasm of the cell. And it's important to note that all cells have cytoplasm. 